let's start. Uh, before I start, if you want to, um, if you want other att attendees to see what you're writing uh, in the chat, please change the to button uh, from all panelists to all panelists and attendees. Okay, this way, um, when you write down a question, everyone else can see it as well, not just me. Um, all right, uh, I see Adrian, you raised your hand. So if you have a question, please write it down in the chat box. All right, hi everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, good to have you here. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, good afternoon. Um, a few words about myself. This is my first time here, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. My name is Yaniv. I've joined uh, the Fivers less than a month ago as the Chief Operations Officer. Um, I've been trading since 2008. I'm mostly a technical trader. Trading started with Forex, but trading uh, also futures, stocks, options, uh, pretty much everything or almost everything. And um, as I said, mostly technical. I'm an avid uh, technical analyst. Um, today, the, the purpose of this presentation today is to show you not only uh, in the slides, but also in live and via MetaTrader, to show you the confluence of, of, of things on the chart that I think can give you a good setup or a good uh, system, um, both for entries and exits and risk management. And also we'll talk a little bit about uh, psychology. Um, it's not a holy grail and obviously nothing is uh, bulletproof, but I feel very confident and very good with the system. And it, it, it makes you wait until you find a good setup and then when the setup, when the good setup uh, uh, appears, uh, the chances, the odds of the trade are really high. And uh, you can take these trades on every time frame, on every pair, on every instrument, basically. Not only Forex, I've been trading with it on futures and stocks. Um, so it's very really good. And it, it's comprised of three uh, technical parts, and of course, we'll talk also on the risk management aspect of it. So the the key, I think, in trading generally, but also of this system is to be patient, uh, to wait for the, the setup, to wait for things to come together. And actually, the, the chart screams at you, uh, take me or take the trade. Uh, whether it be a one-minute chart, a two-minute uh, chart, or a, a four-hour or daily charts. Um, and what we'll see with this system is um, a confluence of supply and demand or support and resistance, uh, price action, and uh, momentum via uh, both uh, moving averages and uh, stochastic. Um, so as for your question, uh, Bogdan, is supply and demand better or best for one hour or four hour? It's good for everything. I'll show you supply and demand. I'll show you examples on two minute or five minute charts, on daily charts, on weekly charts. So it's good for all time frames. Um, and let's start with, with the first component or the first uh, aspect of this um, method and it's the static zone, the static zones of supply and demand or, or uh, support and resistance. What we need to uh, find in the first part of this uh, system or this method is to identify the zones of the buyers and the sellers. And this is basically the, the, the basis of trading, okay? I mean, you can trade naked charts only with this, uh, with this, um, with these static zones, of course, uh, adding price action, and the um, and and you don't need anything else. So this is really the basis. Uh, from from here, you can uh, you can add a few more things to increase the chances or the the yeah the the odds of of taking a, a good uh, trade. What I usually do, I start with 
the higher time frames, of course, depending on, on the time frame I'm trading. Okay, if I'm trading, let's say, four hour charts or daily charts, I will start with analyzing the monthly or the weekly uh, zones. If I'm trading the two minute or five minute charts, I can start with a one hour or 15 minute charts just to draw the zones to see where the support and resistance zones or the supply and demand zones are found. I'm looking for the zones, and I'll show you that on the charts immediately. Um, I'm looking for the zones from where, from which the big moves were initiated. So not every area of the chart is relevant. I'm looking for the places where a big or a long move was initiated or has started. This means that this area is the area where buyers or sellers will probably be waiting once the price returns to that area. I draw these significant zones and uh, they help me both in finding out where a price uh, could start from to enter the trade and where the price could go to to exit the trade. So I have both the areas for entry and exit and, and the areas that can give me uh, a good indication for stop loss and take profit. Um, and you will get this session on the site. Yeah, I think it's, it's recorded. So you will, uh, we will upload this um, session on the, on the website or on YouTube. Um, and the difference between supply and demand and support and resistance is that usually supply, I, I will show you that on the chart in a minute, uh, but basically supply and demand are mostly zones. They are areas, they're like a few pips. They can be a, a few, uh, you know, like a, a five pips or 10 pips. They can be even 50 pips, okay? It's, a, it's usually a zone. I will show you how to draw it. While support and resistance is usually just a line, um, mostly it can also be uh, a diagonal support and resistance with a trend line, whereas supply and demand are always horizontal. But su support and resistance are basic lines. And again, I will show you the differences in a minute uh, on the chart. Um, I draw these significant zones and then I understand the price behavior around these zones. I'm looking for price action. Uh, these can be mostly uh, engulfing candles. Engulfing candles show power of the buyers or the sellers. Or uh, dodgy candles or other reversal candles um, that show some sort of action on the, on the zone, or around the zone. Compression, how the price arrives at the zone. Does it compress into the zone? Does it move up and down, up and down, gradually until it comes into the zone or does it come into the zone immediately? Um, and then uh, do I see accumulation or distribution along the zone? Does the, the, does the price bounce off the zone immediately or does it reside or, or accumulate or is the price uh, or, or the, yeah, is the price accumulated or distributed along the zone for a while? From in this case, usually the, 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 the moves, once you have accumulation or distribution, the, the moves from that zone are usually uh, much bigger or, or much more um, significant. And then I mark the, uh, the, the major support and resistance areas as well. So let's, let's have a look at, uh, at some examples and I'll show you some examples live also on MetaTrader, but Zones are places where you can see big moves initiating from, okay? So, for example, um, I hope you can see uh, my mouse, but if not, you know what, I'll also uh, add a pointer. Um, one sec. Okay. okay, so basically this zone, okay? Um, you can see here that the price moved within the zone and then it broke, it tested it and went all the way down. A big move initiated from this area. Okay, when it came back, it bounced off again. Here, you can see that there was some sort of accumulation, but all this area is a big zone, a big demand zone. Buyers came in strongly here, 
accumulated and then broke out and initiated a very big, a very big move. Okay, when the price came back all the way down, it uh, the, the the buyers were waiting here. You can see here how they penetrated the zone, how they formed accumulation. Again, this is a weekly chart, so for a few weeks there was accumulation, and you can see here big candles big uh, uh bullish candles from the buyers um so again a, a good reaction of the zone and um even if again yeah, this is a weekly chart so you i'm not expecting anyone to take a trade here because it, uh, it's a very wide zone but from here once you see the, the that the price has been initiated you can start looking for areas of reversal uh, areas of support or resistance, or uh, it, or areas of um, uh, like smaller time frames or lower time frames support or resistance. I also mentioned uh, price action. Okay, so within the zones, you can look for price action. Again, it can be engulfing candles, it can be uh, reversal candles such as shooting stars or uh, spinning tops, things like that. Okay, so price actions with price action within the zones or inside the zone. Okay, here you can see distribution right below the previous zone, distribution, some shooting star candles, which these are the, the price action indications, and a big move down. So, and one more thing when we have adjacent zones, okay, for example, supply within a supply or very close to another supply, this is even stronger, okay? Adjacent zones, if you have demand just above another demand, it shows uh, extra strength because it means that, the, that a lot of sellers were waiting here, okay? It's like double layer, it's double, uh, like a, a stronger wall. Um, once I go down to the daily chart, okay, you can see, um, for example, this area was this area here, okay? And this is the top area here. So once I go to the daily chart, I can see again, more price action. I can see, I can wait for places where I can initiate my trade. If I'm trading the daily chart, or the four hour chart, for example, I see here the price with accumulation just above the, uh, um, the weekly, demand zone with uh, resistance one two three it breaks out you see with the strong candle um breaking out and the the move is initiated now it's coming out of a it's coming out of a, a weekly chart or a weekly demand zone it's coming uh, after accumulation i'm expecting a strong move a long move and as i mentioned the next zone, the, the zone above, can be, in this case, supply, can be my target. Obviously, I'm not expecting anyone to hold through, I don't know, 100 days of a trade, but at least it gives me an indication where the price might go. Uh, what I'm showing you here can be relevant also for five-minute charts or one-hour charts. So in, in that case, you will you will have to wait only for a few minutes or for a few hours or maybe just for a few days. Now let's go to the four hour chart after analyzing the weekly and the daily chart. And now I'm looking at the, um, the area here, sorry, this area, okay? The area of around, um, one sec. Um, here it is from 117 to uh, 122. Okay, so here's the 117. This sort of head and uh, reverse head and shoulders came out from this, uh, this uh, circle here. Okay, coming out of this demand zone. Here you, you see sort of a uh, inverse or uh, yeah, inverse uh, head and shoulders. It breaches the neckline, tests it, and goes up. So you know that it's coming from a daily demand zone. You see the pattern, you see the neckline, and you have a signal to go in. Okay, another 
support and resistance area. Support, tested, resistance, resistance, okay? Here, you can also say sort of a, like a, a local supply and demand, but in any case, you have a, a very long uh, support and resistance. And again, you have plenty of uh, options here to go short or long. So if you saw the reversal between supply and demand or support and resistance, you can look for the price action. Here, for example, you have the reversal with the dodgy candle after testing resistance. Um, and this one came all the way from supply. So coming from supply, going to demand on the way, you don't have to catch the entire move, but on the way, you can look for the minor zones or the minor supplies, uh, support and resistance areas. Okay. Um, so all I'm showing you now, or all you've seen right now was just the first part, but this part by itself is good enough um, to trade naked charts. All you need to analyze is the big zones, the big supply and demands to understand where the buyers are coming from, where the sellers are waiting. Uh, and then after you've analyzed the big moves, the big charts, you can go down to the lower time frames and start looking according to the, to the direction of the move, the trend, look for the minor zones um, and the price action around these zones or around these support and resistance areas to go and, um, and take your trades. But as I said, for me, sometimes it's not enough. I'm looking for a confluence of things and this is where I'm adding the dynamic zones, in this case, moving averages. Moving averages for me are dynamic support and resistance. They give me good or, or more confidence uh, around the areas of supply and demand or support and resistance. And again, I will show you in addition to this presentation, live examples, we'll go and, and look for them on MetaTrader. Um, and of course, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, it helps me to see the clear trend, to look for areas of uh, dynamic support and resistance, Usually I use the exponential moving averages like nine EMA, 21 EMA, and sometimes even 50 EMA, mostly uh, for the longer time frames or the higher time frames like the four hour daily, etc. Uh, the 50 can you can play with it and, and try the simple moving average instead of the exponential. Uh, usually what I do, I will show you examples in a minute. I, I enter above, let's say I'm, I'm going long. So I enter above uh, the pin bar or the dodgy bounce off of one of the EMAs and, uh, or the breakout of a flag or a tent or a pennant that are adjacent to the EMA, uh, to the moving average. And the exponential moving averages can, of course, also, uh, give me a dynamic stop loss zone. So I move the stop loss below the, the moving average as the price, as when I see that the, the, the moving average is, uh, is holding very firmly um, or supporting the, the price very firmly. Okay, so if the price is supported by the nine EMA, I will usually place the, the stop loss below the 20 or the 21 EMA and move it as the candles uh, move up. And of course, vice versa for, uh, for short positions. Um, as for reversals, let's say the price is going down and then I'm looking for a reversal once the price goes above the moving averages and then finds, um, so, um, finds support on the, on the moving averages. I will show you an example in a minute. Um, but the reversal usually takes place with a big candle that crosses both EMAs and then goes down to sit on the EMAs or between them and continue or move up. Um, so um, my, the question here is what I'm showing us, what I'm showing you is working. Yeah, it's working for for me, a long run. And it's working in a very long run 
for one reason and one reason only, because I'm using the fundamentals here. Supply and demand is the basis of trading, okay? It's not, it, it, it always works. That's how the market works. Supply and demand, reversal zones, okay? Support and resistance, that's how the market works. And that's why I'm showing you the confluence of these things. But the basis is supply and demand because this is how the market is, is that's the DNA of the market. So it's not like a, a method that works only now. Okay, and it's not a method that works only, only on the one hour chart. It's, it's the DNA of the market. On top of demand, supply and demand, I'm adding the, the moving averages, which I sometimes use, sometimes I, I don't use if I see that supply and demand are enough. And again, I will show you live examples um, in a few minutes when we're done with the presentation, but it's, it's, it's working for, for years. Um, and um, you can also uh, see Gil's um, presentations or um, webinar on supply and demand. Gil, the CEO of the Fibers, uh, I think he's given like four lectures about it. He's been trading in it, with it for years. I've known Gil for over 10 years. I've been trading uh, with Gil also uh, with the system for years or with supply and demand. It's again, it's the DNA. It's not something that is working just now or just in the last year. Um, so you can see daily chart, you can see here, um, uh, yes, and, and I'm definitely able to achieve results and I will show you again, and uh, I, I encourage all of you to try it and to, to trade with, at least with supply and demand, but what I'm adding will give you more confidence and will force you to be patient and wait for the best trades. Uh, so it's definitely showing me results um and good results and it's it's special it, it gives me peace of mind i go to sleep with open trades at night i'm not worried i i i'm not excited anymore when i take a trade i'm not upset when the trade closes with a um with a loss because i know that the system is robust it's solid and it's consistent um so and uh I usually use the, well, the, as for time frames, I think for a small account, I think the one hour chart, the four hour charts are, are the best, not too noisy and the stop losses are not too big. And, uh, and there are plenty of trades on these time frames. I think one hour to four hour charts are the best. Uh, and all pairs work with the strategy, but I think, well, I, I would prefer taking uh, um, uh, pairs that are not too that are not moving too much sideways obviously okay like i wouldn't take aussie kiwi um i would prefer to take something that is more uh, that has clearer uh, trends which is most of the pairs okay uh, but again you will see you will see soon that when when there's no clear trend you will see that it's hard for you to 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 draw the supply and demand uh, on these uh, time frames, and you will just not find a, 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 an opportunity, so you will go to another pair. Um, so this is a daily chart, and I, what I'm showing you here is that just how the the, uh, the the moving averages are serving as supply and demand or dynamic supply and demand. I'm not taking every every time the, the or every touch of the moving average. I'm looking for the areas where you see here. I came out of supply zone. I know the trend is a downtrend because I, I'm coming out of supply. I broke this support line or this or this demand zone. So it's confirming that the trend is or that this pair is weak. And and then when when I see that the areas around the moving averages are confirmed by also maybe support and resistance then it's a better or a higher chance for me, okay? So again, I'm not just taking every touch of the moving average, no. I'm looking for places where I have both, both the resistance of the moving average and the, um, the resistance of a resistance line. Usually it was previously a support line. It doesn't happen a lot. 
And um, again, this is just an example. I wouldn't say it's the best example, um, but you can see other examples, okay? I mentioned earlier also penance, okay, or, or a flag. So you can see here going down, compressing into the moving average, giving some sort of a shooting star and breaking again. Another flag breaking again, another flag breaking again, sorry. Okay, another flag breaking again, all along the moving average, okay? Um, and it's a four hour chart, but it's really nice to see how the moving average serves as dynamic resistance. And you see the formations, flag breakout, flag breakout, flag breakout. Um, and I don't know what you mean by the PASR way, and maybe there is no difference, I don't know. Um, but what I'm showing is a confluence of a few, um, let's say a, a, a confluence of, of methods, okay? Or, or a confluence of signals. I take the, yeah, the nine is red uh, and the blue is 20 or 21. So nine and 20 or 21. Um, so I'm looking for, see here, for example, this uh, blue rectangle or here. Okay, you can see here demand. Okay, you can see here a demand zone. You can see the engulfing candle coming from, uh, from the moving average. The price goes up, sits on the moving average, touches the demand zone, touches the moving average and continues up. So it's a perfect, perfect confluence of demand and support from the uh, moving average. Okay, that's what I mean by confluence. Okay, again, going up, you see here, here, by the way, there is another demand zone. It's not drawn because, it's not drawn because the price didn't uh, test it, so I didn't draw it, but you have another demand zone here and you have another demand zone here, see? How, how much strength there is here with the buyers coming with this big blue candle. This is a demand zone, okay? I remind you, demand is where you see the demand, where you see the power of the buyers. So you have demand zone here with these buyers coming down, testing demand, testing the 20 or the 21 EMA, and boom, again, another demand. Okay, another um, demand from the buyers. So this is a perfect place to go in. You know what? If you're not certain and you say, hmm, I'm not comfortable with going in after this red candle, what you can do is set a, a, a buy stop above it and say, if price bounces off this demand and this EMA, at least I go above this, uh, above this, um, uh, uh, let's say accumulation zone or this, this area here. So I set a, a buy stop here. The stop loss can be just below the 20 EMA. If you wanna be even more certain, you can place the stop loss below the demand zone. Of course, you measure how many pips uh, your stop loss is and you open the trade size according to your risk management, according to how much you're willing to risk per trade in percentage. Okay, uh, and how do I establish, I will, I will give you, I will show you examples of stops and take profit. How do I establish my um, take profit? I discuss it a little bit later, but basically there are two or three ways. Uh, the first way is to not stop, not set a stop, uh, take profit, but say I'm trailing my stop loss. As I mentioned, trail the stop loss below the moving average or below the candles. This is one way. The other way is to say, okay, I see that there was resistance here above this first blue uh, candle. I see here resistance. So if I enter here, my take profit is around here. Let's say it's around uh, from 111.40 to 112, let's say 10. It's around something like, um, uh, you know what, it may be even, maybe it's even around, uh, yeah, like 70 pips or so. So 70 pips and I want to take my stop loss, maybe half of the take profit or so. Let's see if I, yeah, I have like 30, 35 pips stop loss. It's a one to two. I'm good with that. Um, so um, I can set my stop loss on the previous resistance. 
the other uh, might take profit, sorry, or I'm looking for the next supply zone above. Okay, so either the resistance above or the uh, or the supply zone above. Um, the means that appear in the graphs, the moving averages again. The red is nine, the blue is twenty, and they are both uh, exponential moving averages. Uh, as for your request, Ali, to look for the system, the PASR, maybe I'll look at it later. I can't look at it right now. Uh, during the uh, the webinar. Okay, as mentioned, regarding stop loss and take profit, um, stop loss can either be static or dynamic. Um, you can set your stop loss, let's say you're going long, you can set your stop loss below the entry point after price action has been confirmed, uh, so below the zone or inside the zone. Uh, if you entered at the dynamic zone, the moving average, you can set the stop loss below the moving average. And as I mentioned, preferably below the longer moving average. So if the price bounced off the nine moving average, you can set your stop loss below the 20 moving average to give it some room. If you enter at the 20 or 21, you can set it below the 50 or just a little bit below the 21. Again, it's up to you. You can, uh, you can play with it. As for take profit, either you're looking for the opposite zone, the opposite, let's say, supply or the opposite uh, resistance above your entry point, or you can say, okay, I, you know, my method is, uh, let's say, uh, for a stop loss of X, I want to take at least one and a half X or two X. And then even if you think you have more room, you uh, place your stop loss, your take profit, um, at, at a certain point, which gives you double the, the stop loss size. And again, you can always just trail the stop and say, I don't know where the, the price will stop because, um, uh, or will hit because the trend is very strong. So I just want to trail my stop loss. Um, and again, as for the timeframes, uh, Roshan, you were asking if I trade higher timeframes, like H4 or one day, how much of a risk reward I normally target. Remember, you all need to remember that the chart is the same for five minutes or daily in, 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 in the aspect that it's, um, uh, that when, when you look at a chart and you don't know the time frame, you can't tell the time frame because a chart is a chart. Okay, so the risk reward ratio is your decision. The place where you set the stop loss, the place where you set the take profit is according to the zones on the chart. So uh, it doesn't uh, matter uh, what time frame it is. However, obviously the four hour charts or the one uh, or the daily charts are a little bit more reliable in, in the essence, in the essence that or in the aspect that they are uh, less volatile or you know, the bigger moves are more stable, you know, while the, the intraday moves uh, the, are, are hard, it's harder to, to predict the, the, and they're more um, noisy. Um, and yeah, I know that, um, uh, again, if, if you think that you, when you're trading, well, obviously when you're trading higher timeframes, you, your risk is bigger in terms of pips, but then you just take a smaller, a smaller size, a smaller trade, but you get more pips, okay? And um, and I don't know if you need to target the larger risk reward ratio. Uh, again, it's all according to the chart. Um, let's talk now about a little bit about momentum. This is the third component of the. Uh, of the confluence of signals. So we spoke about support and resistance or supply and demand. We spoke about the dynamic moving averages or the dynamic support and uh, resistance uh, in the form of moving averages. And now what I'm adding is the stochastic. Again, just uh, as a, uh, a nice tool to show you or give, me you, give you even more confluence uh, or more confidence in the trade because it's, uh, and I'll, I'll show you very recent examples. It's really nice to see these examples. It, it 
makes you even more confident uh, with the trade. Just uh, to remind you, there are two types of divergences. The regular divergence that probably most of you know is that when the price goes lower or forms lower lows, the, uh, the, the oscillator forms higher lows. And when the price forms higher highs, the oscillator forms uh, lower highs, okay? For example, in this case, we have highs, uh, two peaks at the same height, but the oscillator is going down. Here you have two troughs or two lows uh, that are lower, but the oscillator is going higher. It's a divergence. It's showing um, potential uh, weakness of the trend, okay? And potential reversal. Whereas hidden divergence, um, if, if regular divergence is showing weakness and showing potential reversal, hidden divergence is showing potential, it's showing strength and potential continuation, okay? With a hidden divergence, in this case, you see that the trend is going down. You see that the, the highs are lower, okay? We have lower highs, but... Even though we have here on the left side, we have lower highs, the oscillator, while testing some sort of a, a level here, price level, the oscillator is already over, overbought. It's forming a higher high or a high, which is above the 80, in this case, the oscillator, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the stochastic oscillator, which is moving between or ranging between or oscillating between zero and 100, uh, and and the, the key levels are 20 and 80. So 20 is oversold, 80 is overbought. When the, the oscillator in a downtrend is going above 80, it's usually an overbought signal, which may indicate uh, a resumption to the downside, a resumption of the uh, downtrend. So let's see that in a, in a few examples. And here, again, we can already see the confluence of supply and demand or support and resistance moving averages, and, um, and the oscillator. And again, like I said, I don't always use the moving averages. I use them when, the, when there is clear trend. But here, for example, you can see that the trend is a downtrend, going down very clearly below the moving average, okay? Below the moving averages. And now we see that the price is starting to uh, violate the moving averages or violate the trend, starting to move up and down, up and down. And we see that it's already starting to form uh, a divergence. Now, I'm not saying go long because of the divergence. Th this is not um, what I'm saying. This is not the method. What I'm saying is, first of all, that it's giving you a hint that maybe the trend is weakening. Here, it's starting to give you a, a hint that the trend might start reversing. And as it's reversing, here it formed a demand zone. Okay, the rectangle is a demand zone. You see a strong move coming up from here. It's, it's forming a demand zone and the price is testing the demand zone. As mentioned, it, there, we have here accumulation above the demand zone and then a big candle going crossing both moving averages and testing them, okay? It's written in on the slide of the moving averages. I mentioned it for reversal. Let's go back just a sec here, okay? For reversal, I'm waiting for the moving averages to cross or to the, for the price to cross the moving averages and the price to test them, okay? Then I start the new trend with continuation. Okay, usually the reversal will take place with a big candle cross, crossing both the maze. Okay, so let's have a look here. A big candle crossing both the maze coming from demand. And then the price is sitting on the moving averages, testing them and starting to go up. And then you have the form, you have the trend. On it, in addition, you have a divergence on the stochastic. So you basically have everything. You have demand, you have divergence, you have moving averages being, being crossed and tested and forming or serving as dynamic demand or dynamic support, let's say, okay? 
Here, this is a great area where the blue arrow is. This is a great zone to go in or a great place to go in. I didn't say go in here. I didn't say go in here. I didn't say go in here. Patience, okay? Be patient and it will pay off. Now you have, now you have a solid trend formation or you have all the confirmation from the buyers that they tested the demand, that they tested the, 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 the moving averages, you have the convergence, uh, you have everything in your favor to go in, place the stop loss somewhere below the moving average and just, and just wait, just let the price do what it knows best is to just move and, and trend. Okay, same here. You see that the price is forming a divergence. It's weakening, the, the downtrend is weakening. Again, a big candle crossing both moving averages, testing the, uh, the moving averages and starting to go up. Okay, by the way, here from these peaks, you can see weakness by this divergence down, this uh, regular divergence showing, um, showing you a divergence, showing the weakening of the trend. And indeed it's going down here, a big candle crossing both moving averages and starting to go down again. Okay, um, the stochastic, I usually, um, the stochastic I usually use is eight, five, three. You can also try something with 14, I don't know, 14, five, three or 14, eight, five. Play with it, see what's comfortable. I usually use eight, five, three. Um, and Roshan, as for the large number of trades, remember that if you're patiently waiting, you have more time to examine more charts. The shorter the time frames, the, the fewer pairs you can examine at a time because you have to focus on one chart. But if you're trading longer time frames, you have the time to move between various pairs and then you get more chances to uh, find trades on other pairs as well. Um, Ah, the last thing I want to show you here is that see how the price tested this area of support. And when it went down to this area of support, it went down and went below the 20. Okay, this is overbought. This is overbought. This is showing you a potential reversal to the upside. Okay, same here. Resistance, 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 going up, testing it and see how low the stochastic went down, much lower than previous lows. This is hidden divergence. And hidden divergence, I remind you, is for continuation. Okay? Um, and, uh, and I will show you now a few examples and we will go to the uh, to the live charts and then I will tell you more about uh, the price, including naked chart reading. Um, so let's see here. I took, a, yeah, this is just from a few days ago. Okay. Um, look at this trade. Look at, look at what, what's going on here. The trend is obviously an uptrend. Okay. We have resistance. Okay. We have resistance here. The price is going above the resistance and testing the resistance again. And while it's testing the resistance, look at the stochastic, how low it went. It went below 20, it's oversold. And you have here a signal from the buyers that they're going in. Okay, on the H4, you see this pin bar coming up from this resistance. Okay, and also between these two lows um, on, the, on the H1 chart, you have regular divergence. So you have hidden divergence as for this low relatively to other lows, you have regular divergence showing that it's re that, it, that between these two lows, the price is probably going up. You have this pin bar. Uh, you have the H4 also sitting on the 20 EMA. Okay, 20 EMA, the red line. And you have resistance turning to support. So many signals in one point. Resistance to support, 
dynamic uh, support from uh, moving average in H4 plus pin bar on H4 plus divergence, everything. This is what I call a golden trade. It doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it will give you hundreds of pips, but it's a good entry or, or, or a good, uh, it's a good, uh, it gave, gives me confidence to take it, okay? Um, by the way, it went up, not too much. It went up all the way only to the previous resistance. I gave it a, a chance by dragging or trailing the stop loss. I didn't want to take the profit here. Maybe it's a mistake, but you know, that's what I did. Uh, and the, the stop loss, the stop loss is here. I set the stop loss below the previous low and below the uh, support line. This is where I set my stop loss. It was maybe I think 50 pips, maybe a little bit less. And again, I trailed the stop. I went, you know, this is nighttime. I woke up in the morning, it went up. I trailed the stop. And eventually, you know, I, I hoped maybe that this moving average will support the price, but it didn't. And, uh, you know, I took whatever, uh, I took what I took. Okay, another nice example here. This is a five minute chart. This was a one hour chart. This is a five minute chart. Okay, see again, support, uh, sorry, resistance, tested once, tested twice, three times, four times, going up. You see here when it's tested at first, it's forming a hidden divergence, meaning potential continuation, but it's not continuing immediately. It's testing it again forming a regular divergence between these two lows and then going up. Okay, and I'm looking for setups. It depends on how, how much time I have. Um, sometimes when I have more time, I'm looking for setups on, I don't know, five minute or two minute charts. Sometimes I'm looking for setups on one hour charts or four hour charts. It depends how much time I have, um, but I'm looking for setups on various time frames, okay? Again, look at this beautiful uh, area here. Resistance, resistance, tested once on the moving average. Moving averages, by the way, this is a great area to enter as well, okay? Because it's testing moving averages and resistance that turn to support. This is one entry or potential entry. The second entry is here engulfing candle and the stochastic went to oversold area, even though it didn't form a lower low. See how much low the stochastic went relatively to the previous lows, but it's only forming uh, a higher low, okay? Hidden divergence, continuation, and what a beautiful move up. This is a four hour chart from this week, okay? This week, it's, this is the beginning of the week. Um, by the way, you can see here that if you didn't enter here, you see this resistance line, this trend line, the price closes above it with this small dodgy, and then boom, shooting up with the support of the moving averages as well. So you have, again, a few, uh, you have another chance with a few more signals here, reaching the trend line and with the support of the moving averages. Um, just before we go to the charts, I remind you, this, this is Warren Buffett that said, the stock market, but it's relevant for every uh, financial market, the, for, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. If you're impatient, you will take, you know, uh, trades that, are, that have no reasoning, that are not worth taking. Um, you have to be patient. You have to wait for the good setups. And when, when you take the trade, be patient and let it run. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And again, the profits are not dependent on the time frames. The time frames, uh, it's up to you. You can test the lower time frames. You can test the higher time frames. Obviously, if you if you take lower time frames, you will have to trade more trades and with fewer pips. If you trade higher time frames, you have more time to, for good setups, fewer trades with more pips. Uh, one last thing, don't forget, before we move to a few examples on live charts, uh, don't forget, always use a stop loss, okay? With a technical level, 
set the position size. So decide where you need to put the stop loss on the chart and then set the, the position size accordingly. Be sure you're completely comfortable with the risk. If you don't feel comfortable with the risk before you enter the trade, that means you will probably be nervous. You will probably move your stop loss, move your stop loss, close the trade too early. It's not good. If you're not comfortable with the risk when you enter the trade, don't take the trade. And think on a series of trades basis. That means one trade doesn't mean anything. If you lose one trade, if you lose two trades, that's fine. Look, think about how about a series of trades and, and examine yourself and your method on a series of trades basis. Look at 10 trades, 20 trades and see how you're doing. Not, and if you lose, if you lose one trade, two trades, that's fine. So don't focus on each and every trade in terms of stop loss. It, it's not the end of the world if you lose this trade. It's just one trade. Look left, look where the buyers or sellers and sellers are waiting. Draw your demand and supply, draw your support and resistance. Be patient, don't chase the market. Let the good trades reveal themselves. And I show you, I've shown you just now how you can look for a confluence of signals with support and resistance or supply and demand and the moving averages and the stochastic or the, the, the trend lines and whatever. When everything comes together, it's so obvious that you just can't not take it. But when it's not ob obvious, just skip it. Don't take it. It's not obvious. Don't force, don't force the trade. Um, of course, take into account geopolitical events, economic events overnight or uh, over the weekend. And if you're not comfortable, just close the trade before that. Log your trades in a tr trading journal. Aim to improve. Okay, to become consistent, not to make money right now, to become consistent. And, and yes, Nicholas, indeed, the series of trades comes from Mark Douglas, uh, Trading in the Zone, or um, his book is great, his videos are great. So Mark Douglas is highly recommended. Um, and um, focus on the process, the money will follow. Focus on taking the trades, managing the trades, managing the risk. The money is just a byproduct of good trading. Um, so I will leave. Let's uh, let's just look now at the. Let me just uh, open MetaTrader and share my screen. Just to show you a few examples. This is from this morning, actually. Um, pound dollar. Can you see my? Uh, can you see the MetaTrader? Just say that you can see it. Uh, this is from this morning. An excellent trade. Thank you. Um, one hour chart. Wait just a sec. Let's just um, one hour chart. Look at this area. This zone. Okay. This blue zone is a demand zone. Okay. I drew it. Um, maybe yesterday or the day before. This is the, a demand zone. The price went up. Let me show you how I draw these demand zones, how I uh, choose them or, or recognize them. So when I'm looking for a demand zone, I'm looking for the area where the price initiated. Okay. For example, it can be this area. Okay. Or, or this area. You see here, this um, um, this engulfing candle, you can see in, uh, a pressure of the buyers testing the area. And how do I draw the demand zone? It's the base of the demand is the lower uh, the low of the time of the candles, and the the upper part of the demand zone is at the um, where, where the candles meet, meet the, the lower, in this case, the lower close. Okay. So I draw the demand zone and you see it was tested here and it started going up. You can see how the price crossed the moving averages, tested them, and then started moving on top of the moving averages. And yeah, the stochastic I prefer personally, like in this example is eight, five, three. 
Okay, so you have a demand zone. Another demand zone I, I, I painted is here. Why? Because the price was moving sideways and then started moving, initiated a, a strong move from this area. So I drew it. You can also see it here on the H4, okay, the, um, the, the place where the, the, the candles meet, okay, again, um, an engulfing candle showing strong demand from the buyers. This is forming a demand zone. The demand zone is tested once, going up, tested twice, and going up again. And here, again, perfect example. Perfect example. You can see how when the price is testing the demand zone, even though here it didn't, it didn't make a, a lower low, it's actually making a higher low, the stochastic is already oversold. Again, this is continuation. So demand zone, in addition to the demand zone, we have the 50 moving average. Okay, 50 moving average. So sitting on the demand zone, sitting on the 50 moving average, creating an engulfing candle or sort of a, an engulfing candle here, the stochastic is overbought. And even if you enter here at the end of the candle, okay, you have 50 pips. For me, that's enough. Let's say I have a $10,000 account. I want to risk, let's say, half a percent on per trade, 50 pips. I, I open 0 0.1 lot. This is $1 per, per pip. 50 pips is $50. $50 is half a percent. And then where is my take profit? My take profit can be at the next zone. The next zone, the supply zone is here. Okay, this is the supply zone. So I say, okay, if I enter here, I risk 50 pips. My potential is around 70 pips. This is okay. This is more than one to one. And then I can uh, take. Um, and how do I draw the zones again? How do I draw the zones? I, I'll explain again. Uh, I draw the zone. First of all, I look for the area where, uh, where a big move has been initiated. Okay. Uh, uh, not like one or two candles, but when where I see that that um, a move has been initiated, and then I look for if it's a supply, I take the high of the two candles, the the two topmost candles, as the high of the supply zone, and the low of the supply zone is where the candles meet um, at the close. At the close, um, again, let's. Let, let me show you here. Okay, here. You can see that the, the, that the close of the white candle is, let me draw it here. Okay, so for me, this is the supply. Why? Because the, the, the buyers came here at the beginning of the white candle. And when the black candle broke, or when the negative or the downtrend candle broke, the base of the buyers, then for me, this is the uh, conjunction point or the, the breaking point. So this is for me, the base or the, uh, of the supply. And the base of the demand is the other way around. Here, I can see, uh, just one sec. Here I can see that a big candle formed the demand here between this dodgy and this big candle, okay? This is, um, this is the area of demand. Um, let's see if it's been tested now. It hasn't been tested yet, okay? It hasn't been tested. Um, and why is it important to draw the supply and demand as zones? Because, um, because it's not accurate. You can't know, I mean, you know, it, it, it's not a, um, it's not a, a brick and mortar wall. It's something, um, it's an area and, and each buyer or seller can put their order, you know, in the, in the book at a certain place. They don't all put the, the orders at the exact same, same price. So the zone is basically a zone of orders from various traders around the world. It cannot be just one price. And that's why it's not a line, it's a zone. Okay, it's, uh, 
it's a collection of traders, a collection of orders, a collection of, of thoughts and beliefs. Uh, do I consider news and currency strength or will it be enough what I explained as far without news? I don't trade news. I don't uh, trade, um, you know, I think, again, this is the basic, I, like I said, I'm very technical. So for me, supply and demand are, are more than enough. And, um, and yeah, you can combine strong and weak currency. Obviously, if you, if you go long on a strong currency against a weak currency, obviously it will give you higher chances. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, tell you about what internet analysis source are you, am I using for fundamentals? To be honest, I'm not using any anything uh, for fundamentals. <laughs> I'm just trading the chart. I'm trading what I see. Um, and I don't, again, why do I use many indicators? Sometimes I use these indicators just because they, they, they give me these, these perfect, uh, perfect uh, setups, okay? It, it gives me higher confidence. But like I said, you can trade naked charts. That's more than enough. It's just that with the confluence, some people feel more comfortable. It gives them more confidence to enter the trade or to exit the trade, okay? That's it. How often do I, do I trade? Well, I have a day job, you know, I'm working here at the Fivers, so I don't trade every day. I trade whenever I see a, a good opportunity on the chart, you know? Um, I, you know, for example, yesterday, yeah, here yesterday I saw a nice opportunity on the EuroCAD. I don't remember what time frame it, I think it was the one hour chart. No, you know what, maybe, maybe it was the five hour, uh, the five minute chart, let me see. Um, no, I don't remember what time frame it was. I think maybe it was the one hour. But I, I took a small, a short trade on like a, not a very long trade on the, on the, on the EuroCAD. I, I actually don't remember what time frame it was. Um, but I don't trade, trade too often. I think it was here on, on the uh, EuroCAD. Uh, I saw that the price was sitting on the moving averages. I saw a reversal of uh, support and resistance. Here it was resistance, it broke, it went down to support, uh, sitting on the 15 moving average. You know, I came to the computer, I, I saw it all of a sudden, maybe it was in the 15 minute chart, I don't remember. I opened the trade here uh, when, the, when the candle started going up, obviously it went down, it went down again, but then it started going up. I trailed the stop loss, okay, um, below, Again, I think it was a different time frame. There was a reason I trailed it here and eventually it just closed. Uh, so this is from yesterday. But sometimes there are, you know, days where I trade more often. Sometimes there are days where I don't trade at all. Um, if I can share my last six month results. Well, to be honest, I didn't trade Forex for the last six months. I traded a few options like, um, some options and and um, and um, uh, futures on uh, on interactive brokers and not very often, just very little. Uh, just before coming to the Fivers, I was VP Content and uh, Global Operations at Investing.com, managing seventy people. Very busy. I didn't have much time to trade. So in the last year, actually, uh, I'm getting back to trading more often and more regularly right now. So, um, so yeah, maybe I'll show you in, on the next webinars uh, my results. Um, and as for potential Euro dollar five minute, um, basically, uh, to be honest, at the moment, yeah, it's, let me, let me have a look at the, yeah, actually it's interesting. It's interesting. 
it is there is some potential here on the euro dollar. Let's start with a four hour chart. Four hour chart, you can see testing the demand zone. You see here the demand zone. And you can see here um, a potential reversal pattern with this, uh, with this inverse uh, candle, with this inverse hammer. And you can see that the stochastic is already over sold and turning up. Definitely a potential move up, potential, okay? I go to the one hour chart. So far, I'm not seeing too much strength. There is a divergence, but I don't see enough strength here. Actually, I see weakness and I see sellers more than buyers. Um, let's go to the 15 minute chart. I can see buyers starting to go in. Moving averages are not telling me anything at the moment. Um, again, overbought stochastic. However, I'll, I'll be honest, at the moment, I don't see a clear, I mean, the four hour chart is giving me a potential indication for the move up, but all the lower time frames are not, um, are not, um, are not giving me enough confirmation or, or confidence to take the trade at the moment. So, uh, you know, and even if I decided to take it right now, I would have to take my, to put my stop at least here, okay, which is like 22 pips or so, if I wanna be more confident even here. But my first resistance is this trend line, which is, which is just 24 pips above. The ratio is not good. And yeah, I don't quit my job because, um, because trading can be boring, you know, just trading. Um, fundamentals, I don't use any fundamentals, not really. I mean, I just look at the trends and for me, the, the, the chart is telling the whole story. Anyways, guys, uh, you're more than welcome to look at the Fiverr's website, to look at our programs. Uh, to contact or support with questions, to contact our mentors uh, if you want with more, more questions. Um, I'm already way over time. If you have any questions about this uh, webinar, about the, the, the system, the, the method, or anything discussed here, please feel free to contact, uh, contact uh, support, contact me. And um, yeah, I know you're waiting for more uh, instruments. Anyways, be patient, trade wisely, trade patiently. Really don't chase the trades, the, 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 tra the, the trades, don't chase the money. Let the market come to you. And thank you very much. Uh, the recording of the webinar will go live probably within a few, maybe tomorrow or, or the beginning of next week. Okay. Um, and um, so the webinar is recorded. I don't need to repeat it. I will give more web webinars, uh, both on uh, programming uh, indicators or scripts and uh, discussing other uh, methods of psychology. In any case, thank you very much for staying with me for so long. Um, good luck with your trading. And um, yeah, see you next time. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for attending and happy trading.